Haley came to my lab from um, Cornell University where she did her undergraduate research with uh, Kyle Lancaster. And so as Marty said, uh, my laboratory is predominantly interested in understanding catalysis by the radical S-adenosylmethionine, superfamily of enzymes, and we have a particular focus on how those enzymes methylate unactivated carbons or phosphorus uh, centers, uh, typically using radical uh, chemistry. And so what Haley is gonna talk to you about today is the one outlier in the radical SAM superfamily, which doesn't appear to operate by a radical uh, mechanism. And she just um, uh, solved a, a structure of an enzyme that she'll tell you about that was recently published in, in Nature Chemical Biology. And the structure revealed a, a lot of exciting and unexpected information uh, that allowed us to better understand uh, how this enzyme catalyzes its reaction. So Haley, I'll leave it at that and let you do your thing. So I wanna thank everyone for being here today. I'm really excited to present my work on TSRM, a radical S-adosylmethionine methylase um, that appears to catalyze a non-radical reaction. So TSRM is involved in the biosynthesis of thiostreptone. And thiostreptone is pictured here. It's a bicyclic thiazylyl peptide natural product that exhibits strong potency against many gram-positive pathogens through inhibition of protein translation. It can also target breast cancer cells um, by inhibiting forkhead box M1 expression. Currently, it's used at, um, in topical treatments in veterinary medicine because of its poor aqueous solubility and gastric absorption, which makes it really not great for human use at this time. Therefore, efforts are underway um, to alter its pharmacokinetic properties, both through chemical and through biosynthetic processes. Now, TSRM catalyzes the first committed step in the biosynthesis of the quinaldic acid moiety of thiostreptone, pictured here in blue and red, um, which is believed to confer most of the favorable pharmacological properties. TSRM methylates the inner SB squared hybridized C2 position of L-tryptophan, or TRIP, to form 2-methyltryptophan, or methyltryp, as I'm going to refer to it for the rest of this talk. Um, now, the methylation of inert carbon centers and phosphorus phosphonate centers is performed exclusively by radical S-anosylmethionine enzymes. Now, radical S-anosylmethionine, or SAM enzymes, are identified by a conserved CX3-CX2-C motif, where three cysteines ligate to three irons of a four iron four sulfur cluster, leaving one free iron, referred to as the free iron or the unique iron, which is key for these radical SAM enzymes. Um, all, um, because the unique iron is where one molecule of SAM will chelate. All radical SAM enzymes will reductively cleave SAM to form L-methionine and a highly potent oxidizing radical, which is referred to as the 5 prime deoxyadenosyl radical, or 5 prime DA. And it's this radical right here that's able to activate the inert carbon centers and phosphorus phosphonate centers through the abstraction of a substrate hydrogen. Now, TSRM actually belongs to a subset of these radical SAM methylases that in addition to the 4 4 sulfur cluster, find an additional cofactor. TSRM binds um, cobalamin or vitamin B12 um, with, as an intermediate methyl carrier. And that's pictured right here. Um, and cobalamin can exist in one of three oxidation states. We have cob one olamin which has two unpaired electrons in the DZ squared orbital and prefers to be four coordinate. cob 2 olamin which has a single unpaired electron in the DZ squared orbital and can be either four or five coordinate. And it's really important to note that this COBE2 olamin is the only paramagnetic species and thus um, the only one that can be observed by the EPR. And then finally, there's methyl COBE3 olamin, which um, is nearly always six coordinate because that's the most stable state. Now, the bottom axial ligands of cobalamin, and here it's, it's pictured as the dimethyl benzimidazole base, but that can be a water or a protein residue. Um, plays a large role in modulating the electronic environment and controlling the reactivity. So typically, the cobalamin binding radical SAM enzymes will utilize two molecules of SAM as part of the reaction. The first molecule of SAM is used to methylate cob one olamin to form methyl cob 3 olamin and s homocysteine, SAH, which is just SAM without the methyl group. And the second molecule of SAM will be reductively cleaved to form the 5 prime DA radical. The 5 prime DA radical can then abstract a substrate um, hydrogen and we um, get 5 prime DAH and a substrate radical. The substrate radical can then attract, 
attack the methyl group on methyl cope 3 olamin, forming the methylated product and cope 2 olamin. For almost all cobalamin binding radical SAM enzymes, the reaction results in the use of two SAMs to form the methylated product and one SAH and one 5 prime DAH. However, in our characterization of TSRM, we notice something different. Now, TSRM does not actually produce any 5 prime DAH. Instead, it forms methylated product at SH in an almost one-to-one -one ratio, which would be which is drastically different from all other characterized members of this class. So it TSRM does not appear to react by the ca canonical mechanism because we just have one SAM going to one SAH. And that raises the question, how does it catalyze the methylation of TRIP? Um, we did a lot of different sorts of ways to characterize it, but sometimes it's best to get a real inside look into it. So we started um, structural characterization studies. It wasn't as easy as saying that, but I was able to solve the crystal structure of TSRM to 1.67 angstroms. And um, this is the first cobalamin dependent radical SAM methylase structure. And it's also, I think, the 100th cobalamin binding structure in the PDB, um, which is kind of fun. Now, TSRM consists of three modular domains. First in teal is this N-terminal Rosman fold where the cobalamin binds, a shortened tin barrel in this light blue color, um, and that is alpha-6, beta-6. And it's referred to as the radical SAM domain since the cis residues that ligate to the cluster reside there. And then finally, the C-terminal mobile domain pictured in purple. Um, that we believe aids in substrate binding. Our structure also had both cofactors bound. And when we look, took a look, deeper look into how those cofactors were bound, we noticed some unique um, features. So if we look at the glutamate, or sorry, the cluster, not to spoil it, um, we found that our cluster is not only ligated by the, um, in the canonical CX3, CX2C motif, but we have a fourth unexpected ligand. Glutamate 273, a completely conserved residue, binds to the free or the unique iron where SAM should bind. Um, the binding of the glutamate results in a fully ligated radical SAM cluster, which could explain why TSRM does not reductively cleave SAM if SAM can't bind to the cluster. This is the first example we've seen of a fully ligated radical SAM cluster. The other unique cofactor interaction is of course with the cobalamin and we found a completely conserved arginine on that bottom axial face. Now the guanidino nitrogens of the arginine are too far for a covalent bond at approximately 3.5 angstroms. However, we believe that the arginine plays a role in modulating the electronic environment in addition to blocking water access. Methyl cope 3 olamin is more stable as hexacoordinate, but the presence of the arginine prevents um, a six ligand from binding to the cobalamin and thus destabilizes that methyl cope 3 olamin state by keeping it five coordinate. The positive charge of the arginine can also act to decrease the energy of the COPE one olamin state. So we're hypothesizing that the arginine works to control the electronic environment, thus affecting the reactivity. This crystal structure also revealed the juxtaposition of the two cofactors. And you can see from the nearest part of the cluster to the cobalt, that's 11.3 angstroms. And from nearest part of the cluster to the corn ring, we're six angstroms. Based on the location and the proximity of the two cofactors, it is possible that the cluster is able to reduce any COPE2 olamin that may form to the COPE1 olamin state, which would allow for regeneration of the methyl COPE3 olamin cofactor. We're still really trying to understand what this cluster is doing in the reaction cycle. Um, we can also sort of see how the substrates would bind, um, but it's always better to get a crystal picture. So I was able to solve the um, crystal structure to 2.19 angstroms with azosam, which is a SAM mimic with a nitrogen instead of a sulfonium, and that's in green, and trip, the trip substrate in teal bound. Now, Despite the fact that we have the AZA-SAM SAM analog bound, it still doesn't bind to the cluster. Instead, glutamate-273 is found to bind to the cluster. Um, so at this point, it seems really clear that TSRM does not perform typical radical chemistry simply because SAM is not binding to the cluster and we cannot re reductively cleave it. Um, the other step in the reaction is this methyl transfer from the cobalamin um, to the tryptophan. However, if we look at the C2 position, it's seven angstroms at a really severe angle from the cobalt, which would not support direct methyl transfer. Um, so at this point, it's important to state that whatever crystal, the state that crystallizes is simply giving you a snapshot of the reaction. It's not showing you what's, what is necessarily going on in solution. 
And so there may be other states or other forms that we're not seeing because this is just the most stable state to crystallize. So for this reason, we perform docking studies using the substrate bound structure and substituting in methylcobalamin to visualize chemically relevant binding. And so from the docking studies, we can observe the two most likely binding positions of TRIP and that's pictured here in panel A. So the most, um, pose one, the most likely binding of TRIP is in lavender. And when we um, overlay it in panel B with what we see in the crystal structure, which is that TRIP and TEAL, they overlay almost perfectly, corroborating what we see in the crystal structure. However, um, pose two appears to be more mechanistically relevant and that's in pink. It is close in G-score to pose one. So if we look at pose two, that C2 position is now 3.1 angstroms above the methyl moiety of methyl cobalamin which would be adequate for direct methyl transfer. And then if we look at this N1 position, we're now within hydrogen bonding distance of the carboxylate of SAM. So based on these structures, the docking studies and the kinetic workup, we can begin to propose a non-radical mechanism wherein an unknown base deprotonates the N1 position of um, the N1 position of TRIP to generate a nucleophilic C2 position. Nucleophilic C2 position can then attack the methyl group on methyl cob 3 olamin. We will lose a proton, reprotonate our M1, and end up with our methylated product. Another molecule of SAM can come in and methylate the cobalamin, resulting in methyl cob 3 olamin. Now, based on the docking studies, the most likely identity of the base would be the carboxylate of SAM, just based on hydrogen on proximity. And this mechanism would also require that SAM be present for the entirety of the reaction. So this reaction really has two, is really made up of two SN2 reactions. There is the um, SN2 of transferring from the methyl group, methyl group from SAM to cobalamin, and then there's from the cobalamin to the tryptophan. And we wanna see what the role, see how SAM would affect that second SN2. So a cool thing with TSRM and many of these other cobalamin binding enzymes is we can pre-methylate the cobalamin and remove the excess SAM so then we can feed in other SAM analogs or other things to really look at that second step, which is the transfer from the cobalamin to the substrate. So if we take TSRM and SAM and a reduction, mix them together for some period of time, we end up with methyl cobalamin bound to TSRM and SAH. If we run that over a gel filtration column, we can remove SAH and other small molecules and end up just with TSRM with methyl cobalamin bound or pre-methylated TSRM. And so then with this, we can look at the effect of single turnover SAM analogs on the rate of, um, on the effect, on the transfer of the methyl group from cobalamin to trip. So we take 60 micromole of our pre-methylated TSRM and we add in tryptophan and then either azosam, SH or nosam and monitor methyl trip formation. And you can see that we obtain the highest amount of methyl trip formation with azosam. We're able to still get product with SAH, but at a slower rate and much less. And then with no SAM, um, we get almost no turnover. So this confirms that it's SAM that's necessary for turnover and not, not SAH. Um, and so then to study the role that the carboxylate plays in turnover, we can use a SAM analog, which is known as decarboxy SAM, so SAM without the carboxyl group. Um, and then if we take uh, 50 micromolar TSRM and we add in decarboxy SAM and TRIP and we monitor um, product formation over the course of 60 minutes, we're obtaining just over one micromolar product, which is Real, which is nowhere near close to a single turnover. Um, and then to further verify that decarboxy SAM can bind to TSRM correctly, and that's not the reason for the lack of activity, we monitored um, the rate of methyl transfer from decarboxy SAM to the cobalamin. And if we watch, if we monitor that over the course of 10 minutes, we obtain, um, we're almost able to fully methylate TSRM, indicating that the carboxylate of SAM plays a pivotal role in the methylation of TRIP. And so at this point, it seems clear that there are essentially two major steps in this methyl, in the methylation of TSRM. And so there's a priming step and a chemical step. And so in the priming step, we have enzyme and SAM will bind forming an enzyme SAM complex. SAM can then transfer the methyl group producing methylated enzyme and SAH will leave. With our methylated enzyme, we can then bind SAM trip, ending up with a methylated enzyme SAM trip complex, methyl group can transfer from the enzyme to trip, and methyl trip will leave, leaving us just with enzyme and SAM. 
Again, methyl group is transferred over, SAH leaves regenerating the methylated, en methylated enzyme. And so today I've talked about the first crystal structures of a cobalamin binding radical SAM methylase. We've also discussed how SAM plays a dual role in the TSRM reaction as both the source of the methyl group and also as a base that primes the substrate. And then finally, um, I've shown that despite being annotated as a radical SAM enzyme, TSRM does not actually perform any radical chemistry and is simply masquerading as one. And as we move forward, we're looking into these cofactor interactions that glutamate that binds to the cluster and the arginine in the bottom axial face and how that affects a lot of the reactivity. And so I would um, like to, of course, thank my lab, especially Anthony, who worked on TSRM to start with, and then Erica, Percy, Kathy Drennan, Tyler Grove, who all taught me a lot about crystallography. Arnob, who did all of the docking studies, and Bo, who synthesized just about everything, and of course, uh, my PI Squire, and then our beam lines and our funding sources. And all of you for listening, so thank you. Okay, Kwamatsu. Yeah, I was gonna uh, thank Haley for a great talk and um, maybe take the first question if I could. Um, so it seems to me that uh, the position of methylation is not the most reactive position in the indole ring. And so I wondered um, whether there might be occasional misfiring to methylate C3 or, um, and uh, I also wondered what do you think the basis is for not being able to do the, um, the methylation with SAH bound? I guess it's kind of an odd ping pong type uh, scenario, but um, so could you sort of summarize that? Um, so, sorry, I'm trying to think of the best way to address all of those questions. Um, so, I mean, the most from the docking studies, it shows that actually what we see in what we see in the crystal structure is the lowest energy state, which is this positioning. As for methylating C3, I don't believe that there's any basis in the literature, um, but I can get back to you and check on that. Um, and then as you were asking um, why SAH was not as good as SAM? Well, more that, so as I understand it, so SAM binds and methylates the enzyme and then has to leave. Mm -hmm. um, and <clears throat> and you have SAM bound again with tryptophan when the methylation occurs. Is that right? Yeah, <clears throat> that's what we think. So it's just unclear to me why, um, you know, maybe it's electrostatic, but um, why, what the basis for not being able to have uh, SAH bound, you know, the enzymes methylated, you'd think that at that point you could maybe transfer methyl group, but it, perhaps it's electrostatics. Yeah, I think it really is. Um, that's why we use azosam because it can kind of mimic that um, SAM protonation pretty well at, um, P8, at a pK of like 7.08. Um, I think it's literally just that, okay. that simple, you know? <laughs> All right. Well, Marty, let me just, just uh, uh, say, SAH works, it works. It's just yeah. not as good as something that has a positive charge. And so, you know, it's possible that if, if you don't have enough SAM to come in and, and you know, replace SAH, that if SAH is there, you can still do the, you know, the second step. But it's just less efficient. Okay, so we have some more questions coming to the Q&A function. And Anya, did you say you've unmuted people? Okay, so uh, Nicola, would you like to go first? Yeah, hi, um, thanks. Uh, very nice talk, I really like the work. I was curious about uh, this uh, methylation in uh, other position. Do you observe any other um, methylated products of tryptophan, given that in the well, in the structure, you see a completely different orientation than what you showed later, and your mechanism suggests different. But I was wondering how specific is it, or did you uh, do you look into that? Um, I believe uh, we've 
have not looked, I don't think, but it's been long shown that TSRM selectively um, methylates the C2 position. Okay, thanks. Okay, Wilfred, are you on mute? Uh, I think so, can you hear me? Okay, great. Uh, terrific talk, Haley. Yeah, and, and great, great work. Um, in the thiopeptide field, I, I remember that people have sometimes looked at trip analogs, but I don't remember if that was also done with TR, uh, TSRM. And so if, if it has been done, can you replace the indo with analogs when you no longer have the, the hydrogen to deprotonate? Um, and if so, what happens? Yeah, so we um, tried a number of different um, trip analogs. Uh, there was uh, oxygen there, there was, uh, we put a methyl group there um, on the N1, and there's another one I'm forgetting right now. Um, but activity- Sulfur. Sulfur. Sulfur, thank you. I thought it was a sulfur. <laughs> um, and activity was very, 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 very low. Thank you. Okay, so there's just, I think, maybe one more question in the chat function. So uh, Christian asks, could the methylation actually occur at C3 then do a one two shift C2 similar to the proposed mechanism of TLED? I'm sorry, could you repeat that last part? Sorry, so could the methylation actually occur at C3 and then do a one two methyl shift similar to reported for other, some other types of enzymes? Um, I'm not familiar with that mechanism, um, so I'm going to have to look into that, but, uh, I mean, we've, Scar, are you? <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think if any of the analogs that we addressed would, I would, would, would say anything about that. Um, we didn't, so C3, first of all, that's where I mean, that's the more nucleophilic position, you know, of the indole ring. That's where most, met, you know, most alkylations take place. Yeah. Um, you know, if you were to methylate there, you would have a tertiary, I, I guess, uh, carbon already. Mm -hmm. And, and, uh, I, I I would have to draw it out, but I don't I don't think uh, I, I don't think that's that's what's going on. I'll, I'll have to I'll have to draw it out and see. But it, yeah, we certainly don't see the intermediate. Let me just say that. Okay, and so just a last question for me before we wrap up. And um, Haley, do you like? Do you think this is going to be something that where like new enzymes emerge with similar mechanisms, or do you think this is really a unique um, enzyme that's out there, or do you think you're going to see see a cluster of these now coming up? Well, I think that um, just the nature of the sp squared hybridized carbon methylation, it makes sense to do it more as a non radical mechanism. So I think the other members of this class that do an sp squared hybridized um, methylation, like there's clone six and coon six, which are involved in the biosynthesis of chlorobiocin and cumarbicin, I think those are also going to react by this similar non radical mechanism. But when you're looking at things that are sp um, cubed, hybridized carbons or the phosphorus phosphonate centers, I don't think so. I think it's just this sort of SB squared hybridized carbon center. <laughs>